Hello and welcome on into the Ordo Grigio. Today we're going to be painting a guardsman from the 132nd Praetorian Regiment. As I always do, I'm starting with a Zenithal Black Grey Prime and we're going to start off with the Army Painter Speed Paint Blood Red. The majority of this model I'm painting with a Transon size 2 brush, which I got off Amazon for fairly cheap. And what we're going to do is we're going to load our brush quite heavily, and then we're going to work our way around all the cloth, taking our time working one area at a time, so that we don't get any streaks, and that we can make sure that it's settled into those recesses nicely. Now as the Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarum, are quite a Horde-style army, we're not going to be bringing this Guardsman up to Tabletop Plus standard, and the majority of the painting will be with the Army Speed Paints. So we'll take our time here, try to avoid any overspill onto any area we don't want to be red, such as the belt, the backpack, or the lapels or lanyards. Again, this model was printed on my Anycubic Photon Mono 4K for the same campaign that the Blood Angels Plague Marines will be a part of the 132nd Garbagean Guard of the Planetary Defence Force for the world in which the campaign is set, and their lore and background may be covered in another video later on. Next up is the Speed Paint Gravelord Grey, and we're going to be using this on the exposed leather on the boots, so we don't need too much of this on our palette. Being the darkest and the most opaque of any of the speed paints, we want to be very careful when doing the boots, as any overspill will definitely show through in the final model. Next is the speed paint hardened leather, which we're going to be using for the gaiters, the backpack, its straps, canvas roll, and over the main stock of the weapon, and the banding around the helmet. When painting the gaiters, I'm moving the brush horizontally along with the dimensions of the model allowing the paint to settle in those recesses so that, once dry, we will get a nice transition and some depth. Hopefully you may have noticed that the camera quality has improved since the last model we painted, as I've got a new camera, so now hopefully it'll be a lot easier to see what I'm doing and follow along with these videos on models of your own. Moving on to the pouches and the belt here, we need to be very careful, as a lot of the lighter details run alongside this area, so any overspill will show through or need to be addressed later. This is one of the main qualities of the speed paints that takes some getting used to, as often the paint spreads or bleeds to areas left unpainted, and this actually happens on the guardsman's right lapel, and I have to come back in and touch it up. Now we're moving on to Citadel's Bugman's Glow, to paint all the exposed skin on the hands and face. To get a nice consistency, I'm thinning the paint with water to get a smoother finish, but also maintain some control over the paint. That way we don't paint over any area that we've already painted with the speed paints. As you can see here, I'm constantly rotating the model, not only to see what I may have missed, but also to get a better angle with the paintbrush to make getting into those details a little bit easier. Then, once the flesh is painted, it's time for Rakarth flesh on the canvas of the Guardsman's helmet. Again, making sure we don't paint over areas we've speed painted before by maintaining that control through the brush. Also, I have to go back and paint over the rear of the helmet several times where the blood red caught it previously, as the Citadel paint is reactivating the speed paint, causing it to tint the new paint. Here I flip the model upside down to make sure I get into the rim of the helmet, as this can be quite a tricky area to reach if you're not rotating the model. Then onto Citadel's lead belcher so that we can paint the skull on the helmet and also the metallics of the weapon. Again, patience is a virtue here. As you move across the LAS gun, making sure to get the magazine, the trigger mechanism housing, and a lot of the details, and onto the barrel itself. My initial plan here was for the majority of the LAS gun to stay 
brown, sort of wooden, like an old school musket or single action rifle. However, it was only when I painted it I realised just how much metallics that there was on the weapon. And when painting a model to a tabletop standard, a lot of the smaller details will show out, so it's quite important not to miss small details such as the buckles on the backpack and the rivets holding together the gaiters. After touching up some areas of overspill, it's time to move on to Citadel Zandri dust for the base, again thinning it down to get some decent flow and covering the entirety of the base. Now we are going to come back in with a wash later, so it's not essential that we get into the deep recesses, but a good solid layer will provide us with a good foundation for coming back in for the later step. One of the final steps we can do whilst the base is drying is to come back in with the speed paint Zealot Yellow. This is for the lapels on the guardsman's shoulder, the chin strap of the helmet, lanyards and the sash that trails over his shoulder. This is the step where being careful previously will save you a lot of pain, as other colours will easily bleed into this speed paint. However, in a horde of guardsmen, it's unlikely to be noticed at this standard, as long as it's not too bad. Once the base and zealot yellow are dry, it's time for the washes, starting with Citadel's Agrax Earthshade. This is going over the fabric of the guardsman's helmet, making sure to do both the top and the rim separated by the leather banding. Then also onto the exposed skin to add some shade and dull down that skin tone to a more weathered appearance. The next wash is Citadel's Nuln Oil for all the metallics on the model. The skull on the helmet and the parts of the lasgun we painted lead belcher earlier. We want to dull down these metallics and deepen the shading to give these areas a duller and more used appearance. I do also dot the wash onto the painted rivets on the guardsman's gaiters, however this doesn't show on such small detail, so for the rest of the squad I'll probably leave that step off. The final step on the model is to wash the base with Citadel's Athonian camo shade as I wanted to give the impression of dirty, almost mossy sandstone. The world the campaign is set in is predominantly a marshy planet with isolated manufactorums and hab blocks, built from the sandstone mined out by the penal districts in the northern mountains. Once all the washes are dry and the base rim cleaned up with Citadel's Abaddon Black, we're left with this. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you wish to hear more of the campaign world, let me know in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.